With action and suspense out of the Old West comes the most famous hero of them all, Hopalong Cassidy, starring William Boyd. The Ring of the Silver Spurs heralds the most amazing man ever to ride the prairies of the early West. Hopalong Cassidy, the same Hoppy you cheer in motion pictures, and the same California you've laughed at a million times. Raw courage and quick shooting have built a legend around this famous hero. Hopalong is a name to be feared, respected, and admired. For this great cowboy rides the trails of adventure and excitement. William Boyd as Hopalong Cassidy and Andy Clyde as California. Well, Hoppy, what about our story? It's an adventure we call Gambler's Luck, and it began with a cattle drive. This particular drive was one of the roughest and toughest we were ever on but right up till almost the last one of the nicest. It was fun because we were on an errand of mercy, you might say. Our destination was the horseshoe outfit near the headwaters of the Teton. The horseshoe was owned by Ham Irish and his sister Emma. Ham and Emma were old friends of ours, but we hadn't seen them in years. Huh? I wouldn't miss this for nothing, Hoppy. When we show up with all this beef stuff, the look on Ham and Emma's faces is going to be a sight to behold. Yeah, likely is, California. But when I see them, they're going to get a piece of my mind. Huh? Uh, you ain't mad at them, are you? Why shouldn't I be? When they got in trouble, why didn't they tell us? If friends can't help when help's needed, what do they think friends are for? Oh, <laughs> for a second there, I thought you were serious. Well, I am, kind of. If it hadn't been for Slim Gillian, I wouldn't have known about this at all. Uh, Slim worked up this way last year, didn't he? Yeah, last couple of years. Said last year's die-up after the freeze was almost the worst anyone could remember, though. Dead cows were lined up for miles. Anybody else hit as bad as Ham and Emma was? Oh, uh, I doubt it. They lost every cow they had. They'll have to use this bunch as a starter herd and wait a couple of years before paying us back. We're on horseshoe range right now. Do you know that? Uh, are we? Sure. Ever since we passed Willow Creek. We'll have a real surprise for them before the day's out. Never told them nothing about us coming, huh? Not a word. Thought I'd get even for their not telling us anything. You'll hear Ham use some fancy language. Uh, maybe Samma will hear. What do you mean? Look over there. See who's coming. Well, I'll be. That's Emma. Hello there, Emma. Hi. Well, hi there. <laughs> hi. What are you two old renegades doing up this way? What are all these cows for? Not settling here, are you? No, we hadn't planned on that, Emma. These cows are for you. They're what? You heard them, Emma. Uh, they're for you. The whole darn shebang. We drove them clear from the bar 20. Clear from the bar 20? Well, well I want to know about this. You mean Ham sent for them and never told me about it? Nothing like that, Emma. We made up the herd when Slim Gillian told us about the trouble you're in. No hurry about paying for them, though. You can do that when you're back on your feet again. Well, I never. Brought them all the way from the bar 20 just for us. And we never even asked you. <laughs> oh, Hoppy, this is the nicest thing I ever heard tell of. And it's just a shame, that's what it is. Just a rotten, doggone shame. A shame? What is? That you couldn't get here in time. What do you mean? Yep. Yesterday would have been all right. Yesterday, the horseshoe still belonged to us. But now it don't. Now it belongs to the bank. Hoppy, you got here just 24 hours too late. Now, back to Hopalong Cassidy and our story, Gambler's Luck. It was startling news to Hoppy to learn that he and the Bar 20 trail crew had driven a herd all the way to the horseshoe, only to arrive 24 hours too late. When he heard this, Hoppy pressed Emma for an explanation, but true to range custom, she refused to say anything more until first she'd taken Hoppy and California home and had fed them. Now, however, in the horseshoe's spacious kitchen... Now, wait a second, Emma, wait a second. What are you saying? You haven't lost the horseshoe. Just as good as, Hoppy, just as good as. You see, when Ham borrowed that 10000 yesterday, he signed a note saying he'd pay it back inside two weeks. 
Now, how much chance do you figure two weeks gives us to get any $10,000? What did you put up against it, Emma? Your range and water rights? Yeah, that's right. And all our buildings. That's all we had left to put up. But uh, what was it for, Emma? What did Ham plan to do with that $10,000? California, I got a brother that was in a heap of ways, a darn fine feller. But in one way, he's just a plain darn fool. Gambling? Yeah, that's right, Oppie. I can see you remember him. Yep, it was a poker game he had a hankering to sit into. See, the way he figured was it was either make a killing or go bust. And if he didn't take a chance, he figured we was bound to go bust anyways. Ah, uh, that's too bad. Gambling's a fool's game. He lost, eh? Oh, it wasn't that so much, Hoppy. It was the way he lost. He was cheated out of it. Oh? Sure. He was taken from him just as crooked as if he'd been held up at the pint of a gun. Almost the worst of it was he was cheated by a feller he trusted. Who was he? Well, ain't likely you'd know him. Name is Jeff Randall. He's an Easterner. Came here just a few months back. But everybody kind of took a shine to him. But Ham can prove he was cheated? Oh, sure he can. He's got the cards that'll prove it. It was marked. Then why don't he go after that Randall hombre and make him uh, give the money back? <laughs> That's what he was trying to do. That's why he ain't here now. But I reckon he's got about as much chance of doing it as I'd have of lifting one of them there bulls. Oh, well, why? Uh, did Randall light out? Sure he did, the second he had that cash in his pocket. And with that paint horse he's riding. Wait a second. He was riding a paint, you say? That's right. What about it? We saw a man riding a paint yesterday. Remember him, California? Sure I do. He was heading down the south bank of the Keaton Lickety Split. Man in his 50s, uh, was he, Emma? Well, middle 50s, the way I calculated California. A real handsome, dignified-looking feller. You really think you saw him? Sure, sure we did. I'm sure of it, too, Emma. California, we better do something about this. We should, Hoppy. You get back to camp and pick up a two-, three-day supply of grub. I'll do that. Well, the boys will be gone for a bit. But they're to stay here and help Emma handle those cows. Right. And get back here as fast as you can. I'll be waiting for you. It won't take me long. I'll be back before you know it. Oh, Hoppy, what are you thinking of? You never trail that feller. He's got a good day's start on you, Wub. Well, I won't have to trail him, Emma. I think I know where he's going. Where's that? Fort Benton. How come? Didn't you say he was an Easterner? Sure I did, but how does that tell you? We saw him heading down the Teton. The Teton joins Missouri at Fort Benton. And Fort Benton's the head of the navigation of the Missouri. Hey... You mean he'll go there to grab a steamboat? Of course. Probably a boat to St. Louis. I'll bet you're right. But suppose you do come up with him. Will you know him when you see him? I think so. We got a pretty good look at him yesterday. Well, he's got a day's start on you, Hoppy. Maybe you'll miss him. Don't worry about that, Emma. Either we catch him and get that money or... Or what? Or we'll bring you his hide. <laughs> Oh, oh, Captain Beck. Uh, Captain, I would like you to meet my daughter, Mary. Mary, my dear, this is Captain Beck. Hello. Uh, howdy, Miss Mary. Uh, I'll have to ask you to excuse my daughter's veil, Captain. She has suffered an injury to her eyes. Yes, yes, so my purser told me, Mr. Randall. Uh, may I tell you how sorry I am, Miss Randall? Thank you. That's very kind of you. Uh, the purser said you wanted to speak to me, Mr. Randall. Yes, I do, Captain Beck. Uh... How soon do we sail? Oh, any moment now. The pilots just come aboard. Good. The sooner we leave, the better. You may have noticed, Captain, that I have placed myself here so that I could watch all who came aboard. No, no, I hadn't noticed. Uh, you've got some reason for it? I have. I'm taking my daughter east so that she may have the services of surgeons who can restore her sight. Mm. And as you can imagine, it will be expensive. Oh, I don't doubt it. That's why I'm carrying this cash box. I have $10,000 in here, Captain, and I should hate to lose it. If I do, Mary must remain blind. I see. You'd like me to take it for you? No, no, not at all. Now, the point is this. I have reason to believe that certain men may be following me who would not hesitate to rob me if they could. Well... I would merely like your assurance that if I find any of them aboard and they try to trouble me, I can have your assistance. Well, of course you can. If they try anything, I'll put them under arrest. Thank you. 
That's all I wanted of you, Captain. If that's all, then I'll ask you to excuse me. Of course. Goodbye, Miss Randall. It's been a pleasure meeting you. Thank you, Captain. Goodbye. Father, we're leaving. Thank heavens. Now we're safe. You're sure of that, Randall? What? Who? Who are you? The name's Cassidy, Randall. I'm a friend of Ham Irish. Say, Hoppy, what are we tying up here for? I imagine we're tying up for the night. For all night? Sure, navigation's too tough on the Missouri to run at night. They always tie up like this. Then why'd they wait so long? It's black as pitch already. Imagine the pilot's trying to make time. Otherwise, we probably would have tied up at that army post we passed. Uh Uh-huh. Say, uh, there's been something I wanted to ask you, Hoppy. Mm Mm-hmm. You spoke to that Randall fellow right after we started. Why didn't you brace him for that money? Why'd you put it off for? Oh, I don't know just what to do, California. Notice that young woman with him? The one with the veil? Yeah, yeah, sure I did. Uh, What about her? That's his daughter. I found out about her when I was inquiring after him in Fort Benton. She wears that veil because of an injury to her eyes. She's blind. Oh, golly, Harvey. I I didn't know that. I imagine that's what he stole the money for. Pay for the operations to get her sight back. That makes it tough. We grab that money back, she stays blind, huh? Uh, Something like that, I guess. I can't decide what to do. Actually, the money belongs to Ham and Emma. But if we take it back, you can see what it means. What would you do? Well, uh, oh, golly, I don't know. I had hoped that you would know. Oh, uh, Rando, you heard us, I suppose. Yes, yes, I did. When you told me you were a friend of Ham Irish's, I knew, of course, why you were here. Well, you know all the facts now. Do you blame me for doing what I did? I wouldn't try to say what I'd do in your place, Randall. The fact remains that you stole money belonging to Ham and Emma Irish. What are you going to do about it? Oh, I'm sorry for them, of course, Cassidy, but unless you force me, I don't intend doing anything about it. No? After all, to me, my daughter comes first. Any other question is, what do you propose to do? Well, as I told California, I haven't decided yet. But still, I... Still, that money has to go back there. It should, shouldn't it? Well, I thank you for listening to me anyhow, Cassidy. And thank you for not exposing me before my daughter. I couldn't have done that, Randall. And I appreciate it. Now, if you'll excuse me, I'll go back to my cabin. Perhaps you'll have made up your mind by morning. Yes, maybe I will have. I'll be here anyhow. I won't run away, you may be sure of that. Tough spot, eh, Hoppy? It sure is. I don't know what to do. I'd like to think it over a little longer. You want to run along and see if they've fed the horses? Sure, sure. Where where they got them? Uh, they always keep horses, wagons, and things like that on the main deck just below us. Go on down and have a look at them. Huh? All right, I'll do that. Uh, you, you coming down? Uh, I'll see you in our cabin. Right. I don't know what to do. <clears throat> no! Uh, help me! Help! Hey! California! Oh. What happened? Where are you? Hey! What is it, California? You hurt? What the... Turn around, Cassidy. Why, you... Take it. Oh, oh. Sorry, Cassidy, but you and your partner were becoming troublesome. I'm afraid you'll have to die. Now, back to Hopalong Cassidy and our story, Gambler's Luck. Only a few minutes have passed since Hoppy, answering a call for help from California, found himself attacked from behind by Jefferson Randall. A moment later, depending on the heavy spring tide current to carry them to their death, Randall dragged Hoppy and California to the rail and dropped them overboard. The sudden plunge restored Hoppy to consciousness, however. Now. (coughs) We're almost ashore. You can wait now, California. Here, hold on to me. How you feel? Rotten. I feel like I've got my head half split open. Uh, how you feel it? Mine was split open the other half. Ah, uh, here we are. 
Mm. Let me take a look at you. It's a doggone dark. Uh, don't think you can see anything. Ah, I can see a little. Ah, it's not bad. Skin's broken, that's all. Well, You'll be all right. Randall hit you harder than he hit me. I, I had a little warning, you know. You know, Hoppy, I think that fella really tried to kill us. Well, sure he did. If he could have taken a chance of shots, he'd have used his gun. Probably was afraid to risk it. And I was wasting my time being sorry for that skunk. I didn't. I was sorry for his daughter. I still am. Well, what are we going to do now? <coughs> I think we'll stay right here where we are for a while. We? Huh? Well, what for? Well, in the first place, if Randall wants us dead, I think it would be a good idea to let him think we are. What good will that do? It may make it easier to get that money back. Well, getting it back shouldn't be hard. All we have to do is to go to the captain and tell him the truth about it. He might not believe us, but he'd have to investigate, wouldn't he? Sure. Then Mary Randall would know that her father is a thief. Uh, well, 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 ain't he? Of course he is. But he only became one in order to help her, didn't he? <laughs> yeah, 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 I guess you're right. What's your idea, then? Well, to stay ashore until Randall's convinced we're not coming back. Then go back aboard. Uh, the boat will uh, just stay there till morning, huh? Sure it will. And when we're aboard, we'll see if we can't get into Randall's cabin and get that money box. Won't he be guarding it? Thinking us dead? I don't think so. It's our best chance at any rate. Then he can tell his daughter the money was stolen or anything he wants to. She won't have to know the truth, at least. It still bothers me about that money being meant for to fix her eyes, Hoppy. Uh, it does me, too. But it belongs to Ham and Emma, doesn't it? What else can we do? Hoppy, hurry it up. Here's our cabin. All right, open it up. Go on in. Sounded like they was giving orders to start up when we came in. Yeah, yeah, we're starting now. Well, that's all right, then we'll get off the next landing. Come on, let's get our gear together. We can... What was that? I don't know. Somebody now. But who saw us come aboard? I didn't think nobody did. Mr. Cassidy, Wait. this is Mary Randall. Let me in. Mary Randall? How did she know we were in here? I don't know. She couldn't have seen us. Hank, she can't even see talk to you. If you don't, I'll go for the captain. No use keeping her out. Just a moment. Good morning, Miss Randall. Come in. Here, I'll give you a hand. There. There's a chair here. Thank you. I wonder how you knew we were here. Why shouldn't you have been? But anyhow, I heard your voices. You see, that's one of the advantages of being blind, Mr. Cassidy. It heightens your other senses. Yes, of course. But what did you want? I happen to know that you and your friend are thieves, Mr. Cassidy. What? Hey, no, wait a no minute. No use denying it. My father has told me about you. I know that you followed him aboard this boat in the hope that you can steal the money he carries. Oh, he told you that, did he? What else did he tell you? That was all. That was enough for his purposes. I have only one reason for being here, Mr. Cassidy, and that is... To appeal to your better nature. Oh. If you're prepared to steal now, I have no doubt that you've often stolen in the past. I would like to think that you have the strength of character to reform. But at any rate, I appeal to you on this occasion to let my father alone. If you don't... Yes? I promise you, you'll regret it. Perhaps I will. That's all you have to say? Yes. I'll be going now. But there's one thing more. What is that? I'll be dining with my father at noon today. I would like you to join us. In fact, I'll be expecting you. Thank you. Maybe I will. Oh, yes. And bring the money box with you, Mr. Cassidy. You see, I know you've already stolen it. If you don't, I'll have to inform Captain Beck. Hoppy, she knows about the money. Yeah, I know she does, California. This changes things. This changes things a lot. Hello there. Well, here, Pa. How do you do? You 
look rather surprised to see us, Randall. Well, I, I, uh, I scarcely know what to say. Uh, uh, won't you sit down? Thank you, we will. I'm very glad that you and Mr. Carlson have accepted my invitation, Mr. Cassidy. You've brought the money. No, Miss Randall. No, I haven't. I've decided to keep it. I see. You leave me no choice. I've already spoken to Captain Beck, Mr. Cassidy. Now I shall have to ask him to arrest you. I don't think your father would like you to do that, Miss Randall. Why not? I don't think he'd care to have you know he's a thief. Hey, Cassidy. Hoppy, Hoppy, you're telling her. I thought we agreed that... Uh... You'll have to let me handle this, California. But doggone it. As I said, I'll handle it. Yeah. Miss Randall, I've told you the truth. I'm not the thief. Your father is. I don't he... believe it. Captain Beck, come here, please. Yes, Miss Randall? This man refuses to return the money. He has some ridiculous story to the effect that my father is a thief. I'll have to ask you to arrest him. You know that he's taken your father's money? You'll prefer the charges? Yes, I know he has. In that case... Just a moment, Captain. You better let me explain. No I... explanations needed, Cassidy. No, no, don't try to draw. I have you covered. Ah... I'd suggest that you surrender without making trouble. Once the people aboard this boat know what you've done, you'll be lucky not to be lynched. Now, back to Hopalong Cassidy. Hoppy... Captain wasn't kidding any about this bunch being ripe for a lynching. They mean business. And so do I. But you shouldn't have... uh... Hey, wait a second. This is trouble. All right, you fellas, get back. The whole pack of you. Get back now. Get back. Just one of you come a step closer and he'll get drilled. No trouble now, no trouble. I'll handle this. Hoppy, come on. Why don't we get the chance? I'm staying here. You're... Y- you gone loco? Why, they'll... Just keep Captain Beck here covered. Don't let him interfere. All right now, Miss Randall. This is between you and me. I want the truth. You sh- No! Stop him! He's pointing his guns at me. Stop him! Stop him! Hoppy, you gone clean shot crazy. I know what I'm doing. I thought that might work, Miss Randall. Now tell me something. How did you know I was pointing these guns at you? You're blind. You claim you are anyway. How could you know what I was doing with these guns? Why? Um, I think we'll find out just what is wrong with your eyes, Miss Randall. No, Let's see what's behind that veil you're wearing. No, don't! Ha, 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 just as I thought. Your eyes are as good as mine. You were only pretending to be blind. That veil was a fake. Hey, I thought I'd seen that female before. Well, her name ain't no Randall, and there's Frisco Sal. No, 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 just a moment, just a moment, please. Who are you? Well, my name is Pete Peterson, Cap. I'm a miner from up Denver way. And, uh, and uh, who did you say this young woman was? Frisco Sal. Except I couldn't recognize her as long as she was wearing that veil. You, you know her? I know her. <laughs> oh, I should say so. Well, I was there when they were running around at Julesburg. Just give me a couple of minutes and I'll round up a dozen of the boys that used to know her. <laughs> you go ahead and do that, Peterson. In the meantime, Captain, you'd better keep an eye on this pair. Uh, yeah, uh, well, yes, yes, I, I do believe I had. Doggone, Hoppy. When you pull that trick on her with your guns, you knowed she could see. But what I don't see is, uh, how you know? I've known it since she called on us this morning. If she couldn't see, how could she have known that we already had her father's money box? Well, well, I'll be darned. Of course, of course. <laughs> and I never got it. What do you got to say now, Miss Randall? Or whatever your name is? What I've got to say is to this sucker I was working with. So you told me I couldn't get in any trouble, did you? Now, Sal. <laughs> You'd worked this trick a dozen times on the Mississippi, had you? Why, don't you? Don't say anything, Sal. Don't say anything. I'll say plenty. Cassidy, all this was was a trick to play for sympathy. He called it insurance. If the fellow he stole from caught up with him, he figured he'd be so sorry for us he wouldn't do anything. I thought so. Better take him away, Captain. Keep him under guard. Right. I'll turn him over to the authorities at the next landing. 
Come along, you. You're not going to take it. You've got us in trouble. Oh, gone it, Hoppy. Uh, I got to apologize. You know, I, I figured that was a dirty trick you was doing when you started telling her about her pa being crooked. I just wanted to see how far she'd play along with him. I had an idea that sooner or later she'd do some talking. <laughs> she did plenty. That's right, plenty. Enough to send her and Randall to jail and us back to the horseshoe with Ham's money. <laughs> Even a clever gambler hasn't a chance when Hoppy gets on his trail. So Hopalong Cassidy brings to an end a gambler's luck. In their next story, Hoppy and California become involved with a band of border outlaws, and it is called Danger Wears Two Faces. Hopalong Cassidy, starring William Boyd, is transcribed and produced in the West by Walter White, Jr. Gambler's Luck was written by Gibson Scott Fox, with original music under the personal direction of Albert Glasser. All stories are based upon the characters created by Clarence E. Mulford. This is a Commodore production. <laughs>